the mountains you got the most beautiful city in the whole entire country the university is absolutely looks like it's out of a storybook it's just beautiful people are incredibly genuine and and extremely nice it's just a place that obviously I'd want my kids to go to school and it sells itself you don't have to sell anything about this place you just got to get them here you know the old field of dreams yeah. build it and they will come it's already built yeah, I didn't sign any uh, uh, mustard bottles or, or, or golf balls. Um, maybe wish I had had a golf ball that night, you know what I mean? But uh, I'm only kidding. All right. it, was, it was very casual. Um, we were just kind of walking off the field, and he was like, so what you, what you going to do? I said, I'm, I'm going to come back next year. He was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Let's, let's, go, let's go to Atlanta. And I was like, yes, sir, let's make it happen. There on the field, the pride of the Southland band crisply marches into the giant tee. The rear, the roar of 97,000 fans rises with each rhythmic step. In the background, George Beatsis is singing White Balls White. The orange and white shakers flood the air. The volunteers are ready at the north end of the football field to burst through the gate. They're coming now, racing onto the field for the giant tee. In that magic moment that says, wherever you are, it's football time in Tennessee. Welcome to the Talking Falls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. I'm Dauber. What's happening, Boogie? Let's talk about some football, man. Uh, homecoming down on Rocky Top. Tennessee takes care of business, sixty-five to twenty-four. Never in doubt. Sometimes these games, it's almost it almost almost feels boring it's like they just all right let's get the twos let's get the threes let's get some guys some reps uh but it was homecoming they they were rocking the pat summit blue accessories what, what do you i think those look good with orange but i you know me man i'm a, I'm a uniform guy i like the alternate units what would you say about taking it a step further maybe every october they find a way to wear some type of alternate uni with the blue and the orange i'm down i'm down with it listen i i am too um I saw uh, most people familiar with, uh, I think it's Chad Fields on Twitter, uh, kind of the unofficial uniform guy, does a lot of good stuff, uh, posting stats and, and, you know, pictures and history and uh, even some mock-ups of, you know, stuff that could we could see, we'd like to see. Um, he was talking about, uh, you know uh, – was it last year that they did the breast cancer awareness or, or maybe a couple years ago, uh, they wore some pink in an October game. Um, and and I, I'm, I'm all for that. I mean, I'm not the traditionalist that it is, it's gotta be orange and white. We're orange and white. You can't do anything else, man. We're seven and oh, we're playing really good football. It doesn't matter what they wear out there. I like the fact too, that they're almost committed to rivalry games going old school like the alabama game coming out orange and white uh, i like that i'm not well, mad at that I, I don't know that we've mentioned it before but i've seen um there was a uh statement or um danny white in the athletic department issued a kind of memo of what uh rivalry games will consist of traditional uniforms and championship play will consist of traditional uniforms so 
what I take from that is, you know, you saw baseball wearing their black jerseys and hats in the SEC championship this past year. Uh, something like that will no longer happen. It'll be that traditional unis. Uh, and, and like you said, I, I think for, for big-time rivalry games or championship play, I think that's where you stick with it. But, you know, homecoming game, uh, you're you're paying homage to, to 50 years of Title IX, uh, Pat Summit, um, and, you know, kind of a nod to the Lady Vols. Um, it, it is, you know, I, I think it's trademark Danny White uh, – building the brand of Tennessee athletics, not just the football program, just across the board. So I'm all for it. Let's run down the chat. we got almost 200 people watching live. Thank you guys for hanging out after the UT Martin game. And it's comical because I told you, Dauber, right before we went live, I told you what was going to happen in the chat. Uh, look at this. Debo says, Boggy. I don't know who Boggy is. Whoever Boggy is, he got exposed. Uh, this is what's funny. Here, here it is again. Debo follows it up. 42-21 by prediction. Prediction by Boogie got smoked. Got smoked. Dauber, do you remember what anybody, what everybody in the chat said? when I said that UT Martin was going to score 21 points. Do you remember what they said to me? Do you remember the abuse I took? Now, here we sit. UT Martin scores 24 points, and people acting like I'm the crazy one? You're acting like I'm the crazy one? All right, let's run down the chat for real. Uh, you guys can roast me all you want to. You know I was way closer than you guys were. Uh, Joshua Whittington uh, says, Go Big Orange. What's up, Joshua? Good to see you in the chat, buddy. Connor is in the house dropping those custom talking balls emojis. Uh, Crystal is also here. Clay's here. GBO Kyle Beach is in the house. The Southern Life is here. What's up, Southern Life? Uh, let's see who else we got here. Where'd it go? There it is. Stevie J for $20. Thank you for the $20 Super Chat, Stevie J. We appreciate it. Uh, can't wait to see all the receivers healthy and working together. Yeah, what's this uh, receiving core going to look like once Cedric Tillman is back in the mix? Ooh, Joey Shumpert man. for $20. Y'all are being very generous tonight. Uh, says, GBO, I want a number 11 jersey for my next date. <laughs> I would definitely score with it on. Yeah, Joey, we'll talk about uh, Jalen Hyatt. Another big afternoon for him. John Hill for $20. That ain't cheap. Great first half. Go Big Orange. Second half, we need some work. Score now, score often. They don't give participation medals anymore. GBO, uh, Kelly Thompson for five. Thank you for Super Chat. It was good seeing Tillman on the sidelines. I can't help but wonder if he's looking at Hyatt and saying, gosh, that could have been me. I don't know. I would I would imagine that he's probably pretty happy, pretty happy uh, with what Jalen Hyatt is out there doing. For sure. You know, that uh, that's going to take some of the focus on off of him. Uh, so he'll not be bracketed as much because it's, it's a pick your poison. Uh, when he comes back to the field, um, you know, are, are you going to, Try to try to double him or, or shade his side of the field, or you know, do, do you, you? You can't you can't leave Brew or Hyatt or Tillman, and and then you know you're you got Keaton in there. Uh, man, it, it is this offense is clicking and rolling. Um, hit 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 over fifty in the first half, um, and, and then I mean I think they kind of took the took the foot off the pedal a little bit. Um, man, it's just. It is something impressive to watch because today, again, you, you saw the scheme. You saw guys, and, and I know it's, it's Tennessee, Mark, but it happened last week against Alabama. This offense, when it is running at the efficiency that it does, that's what it's designed to do. Create those mismatches in the space and, and have guys running wide open. Or, or you know, a, a burner like Squirrel White, who got behind the coverage, uh, a, a speed guy like Hyatt, you know, matched up with a linebacker and, and crossing over. And, man, it's just – it's a thing of beauty when it's working. You know, the, the big question for me coming in, and we talked about it Wednesday. That's why the chat is uh, having so much fun. Uh, some of them agreeing with me. Some of them saying I was way off base and completely wrong. Uh, look, it was how did that Bama game, game impact them? And, and how did it impact us as fans? We talked about Alabama all week long. We never once <laughs> talked about Tennessee Martin. Even today, waiting on the game to start, it's like – all right, man, they're playing Tennessee Martin. They're going to blow them out. It is what it is, and then we'll talk about it, and then we'll, we're immediately going to start talking about Kentucky. Dobber, we're going to start talking about Kentucky before this live stream's over. That's the oh, reality yeah. of it. Uh, but how did they start? And, you know, I, I said Wednesday, I said, I'm afraid they're going to come out. They're going to start slow. They're going to play sloppy. And Hypel, I even tweeted this at Gabe. Uh, we were tweeting about it earlier. Hypel 
pregame, told the SEC Network that this team was very mature in the way they handled business this week. He had a quote that I liked. He said, the challenge every single week is us. We are the challenge every week. And I like, like, that's a championship mentality. It's not about whether we're playing Alabama or Tennessee Martin. It's we go focus on us and do what we do. Uh, But they did start slow. I I don't care what anybody says. They started slow. You yourself tweeted out and said, can anybody in Neyland Stadium play in the secondary? Yes. The second the defense started slow, and, and frankly, you entered the game with a lot of questions on the defensive side of the ball, and, and then you have turnage go out, and you know it, it looks like which the the kid from UT Martin that played quarterback, um, you know, if he had time, he threw a good ball, um, and the. Uh, I, I can't. I don't even have. I didn't take notes this game. Um, and, that, and that's I, fine. Well, the thing that was that was my whole point. My whole point going into the game was UT Martin likes to throw the football around. Could they make uh, not expose Tennessee secondary, but like you said, Jalen McCullough out, Kamal Haddon out, Christian Charles out. Uh, Turnage went down early, so he's out. I mean, you're talking about a limited secondary against a team that likes to throw the football. And I know everybody's saying they they only went down and scored once. They were driving that second time at ease. And that interception, and how about that? William Wright, a walk-on in the game, makes that interception. And then from there, I felt like they were just off to the races and never looked back. You know, I think – I took the notes here. Let me see. Where are the notes? After that interception, UT Martin comes out and they go three and out. The next series, they fumble on first down. Then they go three and out again, three and out again. And I said, all right, I'm not tracking this anymore because the the, the boat race was on at that point. Yeah, it uh, it, it was moving forward. And, and guys in the chat, don't don't crucify me. Listen, seven and zero, oh, happy. You know, got the. W sad today. that we had to say that. It's sad that you had to say that. Took care of business, but. Moving forward, you're facing another team next week that likes to throw the ball. They're probably going to throw it 50 times, and not because they're they're down points. That's just that's what they're going to do. They've got a, a decent running game, but they're going to throw the ball because that's Tennessee's weakness, and that weakness is magnified with the guys Boogie just mentioned that were out before the game, and and then Turnage going out. Um, I I don't know. That they said a upper body injury, um, so we'll, we'll see. Looked like a concussion. The way he was staggering walking yeah. off the field. So we'll we'll see. You know how this week goes for him, but man, um, that. Uh, Hold on a good- second. Hold on a second, Debo. I get it, man. You want to have fun in the chat? Have fun in the chat. But but get a life, dude. Get a life. Nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying that Tennessee didn't play good. Nobody's saying Tennessee didn't start. Okay, calm down. Like, if you want to have fun in the chat, have fun in the chat. Don't be a dick. Okay? That's it. Sorry, Dobber. Go ahead. Sometimes you got to call a jerk out. Um, the, the, the secondary, entering the game was a question. And I, I think it has been all year. And, and I think teams know that. And, you know, it, it is one thing where the rest of the defense has to step up. And, and, you know, you, you called it uh, probably the, the Florida game. Bring the pressure, live and die by it, gamble on pressuring the quarterback to make a bad throw instead of giving him all the time in the world to pick apart the defense. And, and I think, really, since about that point, this defense, the front line, the linebackers, they played so much better. And, you know, it, it has been kind of – bend but don't break on on the back end so you know we'll we'll see moving forward but i'll put this out here this offense is going to get theirs i've said it since hypo took over they're going to score their points i don't know very many teams that can hang with them yeah it doesn't matter who they play and and something interesting too and again you have to reiterate and say calm down we're we're just pointing out things that happen throughout the course of the game tennessee when, when the ones were in there dominated they dominated offensively. They did start to stall out a bit once the twos came in there. Uh, but I, I would be lying. Joel sent me a message during the middle of the game and said, are you concerned with the running game? And when you look at the starters, man, Jabari Small had 11 carries for 33 yards. Uh, Jalen Wright, six carries for 19 yards. They struggled to run the football against a, a, a 
very below average UT Martin team. But on the flip side of that, when we look at the way this season has played out, and this is what I told Joel, I said, I, Joel, I said I'm going to ride or die with this team because – they had success running the football against LSU. They had success running the football against Alabama and against Florida. And, Start you know, it, it's against Ball State. It, it's against like, Akron. Yes. You know? it's And it's like, what is it? Is it just, is it scheme? What, what is it? I, or is it just a lack of focus? Is it just, I don't know. I don't know. It, but it's worth noting that they did struggle to run the football. But at the same time, I, I, I'm not going to complain when Tennessee scores 31 points in the second quarter, 52 points. In the first half, 52 points. I, I, I was seriously thinking, what is this, Xbox? Are, are they legitimately going to go you know, score 100? And I, I like that Josh Heupel, he does stay aggressive when the ones are still in there. And I think it was, I think Joe Milton came in when they did the double pass with Princeton mm -hmm. Fant. But look, it's in the commentary team touched on it. They said, hey, you're putting stuff on film that Kentucky and Georgia are going to have to now prepare for. And that double pass, man, what, what a thing of beauty. What an absolute picture perfect pass by Princeton Fant. Let, let's talk about Princeton Fant. What what a game he had. You know, uh two two rushing touchdowns, a, a passing touchdown. Um I was waiting for the trifecta, you know, get him get him a, a receiver. Man, he should have had it early because that he yeah. was wide open early in the game and yeah. dropped it. Uh did you see him shake his hands afterwards too? I think oh, he was ball, not happy. That ball had some velocity on it. Um uh, another thing, uh, uh, a really big positive, uh, Milton looked good again when he came in. You know, he threw some good balls. Um, man, he, he has such a strong arm. I mean, he, that one deep ball he threw was an absolute laser. You know, in comparison to uh, two of the ones that Hooker had, they just seemed to float and stay up in the air for so long. Uh, yes, I, I was again texting somebody in the game. I said, "Man, he's just like skyrocketing it and saying, go, just go get it, just go catch it, and make the play." Backyard football. Backyard yeah, who football. was it? It was Jalen Hyatt, and then the other one was it Squirrel White? Uh, Squirrel White, Keith, I think. Uh, no, yeah, was it, was it White? White? I can't remember. I can't. I know the first one was yeah, Jalen Hyatt. I was like, that was a weird throw. Everybody weird throw. was in on it today, though, man. You, Rocky you Top saw... Dad saying uh, Tennessee ran the ball for two hundred and one yards and four touchdowns. But like I said, don't 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 misunderstand what i'm saying jabari small your starting running back had 11 carries for 33 yards your, your one two punts jalen wright six carries for 19 yards dylan sampson did have 13 carries for 62 45 of that came on one play uh, and then also hendon hooker added 28 on the ground joe milton added 23 on the ground so you know looking overall at the rushing numbers i get it what you're saying rocky top dad uh, i just want more success out of your one two punch in your starting running backs sorry yeah. Barbara, i cut you off to get that point no that, that's fine and i think that a big part of this offense is the success of the running game but at the same time you know when when your quarterback your Heisman front running quarterback is having the type of day just it's standard for him. 18 of 24 with 276 and three TDs, averaging 11 and a half yards a pass. I mean, come on. That's what about it, this with the with the run game? Do you think because clearly we saw today Hendon Hooker did run the ball, but it wasn't designed runs. It right. wasn't a lot of read option. Do you think that's why when teams truly believe that Hendon Hooker is going to be a threat, they've got to focus on that, and that opens up the run game a little bit more maybe when you get Hendon Hooker involved? Because, I mean, that's that's another – um, another ball carrier you have to account for, and um, which you don't see that when they play Ball State, Akron, right. or UT Martin. Just, just like I said, when when you got Tillman back, you know, and, and you're trying to shade or, or bracket one side of the field, you're not going to be able to do that. And, and I think that is I, that's that's probably a really good point to uh, the the running game opening up a little bit when you have to account for that RPO uh, or you know kind of read option that that hooker will run sometimes and uh i mean it's just this offense is i, I think they they still remain a hundred percent efficiency from the red zone no oh, that got broke by second it oh, got it broke yeah it was it was when milton was in the game and they went down and they ended up uh what was it there was a penalty i think there was a penalty oh, and then chase missed, mcgrath missed the, missed field, goal. the field goal right yeah. right right okay but still that that's that's ridiculous so that they're, they're probably like low 90s percentage wise 
I maybe mean, even mid nineties. Seven games into the season, and, and you've scored every time you got in the red zone up until today. Uh, let me uh, the teams we've played. Let me run That's through some super chats here real quick. Fido Productions for five. Thank you for super chat. Was just me, or was Hooker off? I didn't think so. I had a couple of passes that he missed on, but again, Dauber just ran down the numbers. 18 of 24, 276, three touchdowns. Uh, maybe, maybe. I mean, he had a couple of passes he missed on. He had the one, you know, the deep balls that he was throwing up and just letting guys go make plays. Uh, Fido for another five. How about that TD from uh, Princeton Fant? Boogie, what are the winning lottery numbers next since you see the future? I don't really see the future. I guess it depends on who you ask. Either either I'm getting respect for saying UT Martin would score 21 and they scored 24, or I'm called an idiot because I said Tennessee was going to score well, 42 when, in fact, they scored 65. Listen, if you take the aggregate, I, I, you, you said you, you, got, you, you got the UT Martin score pretty much dead on. I said 63 for Tennessee. So I got. So as a team? As a team? Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we're cooking. What more do you want? What more do you want? Uh, teamwork makes the dream work. Tucker White uh, for five. Uh, for what it's worth with this victory, Tennessee is guaranteed back-to-back seasons without spending a week under 500. So for the first time since 03 04. How about that? What's Josh Heupel's record now? Josh Heupel's record is 14-6. and six, A little over halfway through year two. A- absolutely amazing. Stevie J for 20. Uh, very generous, Stevie J. We appreciate it. Big shout out to Princeton Fant for an awesome touchdown pass. I think that's the thing. Not only did it work, not only was Hyatt wide open, but it was a beautiful throw. Even though Hyatt bobbled it, I was like, oh my gosh, pull this thing in and get to the end zone. Uh, Fido with another five. The future is Squirrel White and Boo Carter. Uh, yeah, Boo Carter with a crystal ball this week to Tennessee. Chatsworth for five. Glad to see Squirrel White get a touchdown pass. Yeah, Squirrel White, man, fan favorite. Everybody loves that guy. I love seeing him go out and and make some plays. You saw Chaz Nimrod, I, and somebody mentioned this in the chat a little bit earlier. Uh, they said, I wish that this coaching staff would kind of run the offense full steam ahead when the backups come in. And I wish that too, because I feel like they did it for a little bit with Milton, and then it kind of slowed down and stopped. But once Taven Jackson is in there, you're not really truly seeing the offense. Uh, so I, I don't I don't disagree with that. Guys, we got 320 people watching live right now we appreciate you guys being here for a ut martin post game show blowout uh, thank you for coming and hanging out with us make sure you do smash that thumbs up go check out the merchandise you can go to bonfire.com slash store slash talking balls if you somehow missed these shirts throughout the middle of the week these are the brand new business shirts you know henry toa toa said it's not personal it's just business. So we put together this scoreboard shirt, 52 to 49 over Alabama. Got that talking ball cigar in the middle, and it's just business. So you can check those out. We would appreciate it, any and all support. Uh, but also, we got the Old Faithfuls, Vols by Fitty, uh, the State Pride, all the original merchandise. Again, bonfire.com slash store slash talking balls. The link to that is in the description as well. Um, I, I, I've got a little something I, I shared the other night at the, uh, I think, I think closing out the fan show. And, and since we, we've probably got some people on the chat right now that, that weren't with us Tuesday night, um, you, you were talking about Josh Heupel and his record, um, his season and a half, he is 12 and four in sec play. Jeremy Pruitt in three years, was 10-16 and 16 in SEC play. Butch Jones, in five years, was 14-26 and 26 in SEC play. And Derek Dooley, in three years, was 5-19. and 19. So you, you look at the, the last, what is that, 15 years? This coach is, is two wins away from tying Butch Jones's five seasons in conference play. So you, you talk about the turnaround and, and what Coach Heupel has injected into this program. It is it is great in year two. Year two. That is what is so impressive. And, and I know that, you know, you've got the transfer portal now. And you've got the NIL and all this. And that listen, that's changed the landscape of college football. And I think that accelerated uh, the, the turnaround for Tennessee. And this staff has done an amazing job evaluating talent and bringing in guys that could immediately help the team. And I think that that will continue. And I think they will get 
some some help on the back end of that defense moving forward. Yeah, and we but even still, like yes, the transfer portal does make a difference. It adds depth. Uh, but look look at the guys who are putting up the numbers. Obviously, the quarterback room, it's, we talked about this Wednesday night, the quarterback room is a completely different quarterback room than it was just a couple of years ago. But Cedric Tillman, balling out. Mm-hmm. He was a member of this football team. Jalen Hyatt, member of this football team. Uh, your running backs, members of the football team. Uh, you, yeah, you added some, I think you added some key pieces on defense, particularly depth-wise. Uh, but you got Juwan Mitchell out there, uh, some guys you in the secondary play? But but yeah, but even still, your your yeah, I mean your your Aaron Beasley's your your starting safeties, you know, for the most part, Josh Heupel's doing this uh, with the guys that were already a core part of this football team, and that's why you know I keep going back to when you have this type of success and you start the transfer portal this off season is going to be huge. This football yeah. team, I truly believe, is going to have some success in the portal, and and obviously we're we're already seeing it in recruiting. I mean, look where they're at. In the class of 24, what do they got now? Four guys committed, crystal balls for two more guys. I mean, they're they're adding talent and and guys in the secondary. I mean, that, that's key pieces that that they need on defense. But I, I'm I'm really excited to see what they can do in the transfer portal because I think you're going to be able to add some guys uh, that that may be able to not just add depth but actually come in uh, and make an impact. And, and then on top of that, what what is what does this Josh Heupel football team look like when he has the guys that he's evalu- evaluated, the guys that right. he's offered and, and got in his system? And we've seen that with a guy like Nathan Laycock, who is a three-star. Now he's a highly rated four-star. Uh, what happens when those guys arrive on campus? Uh, it, it, it'll be, um, I, I would think, even more efficient and and you know clipping at a, at a higher rate than we are now, which that's hard to imagine. But one, one more thing that I'd like to point out is, you know, for, for all the criticism of this defense, listen, we're talking about a guy in his second full season as a defensive coordinator. Tim Banks is also kind of learning learning all that, uh, being the, the man on defense. And, and, and frankly, you know, you, you look at, what he's been able to do the last two years run defense and, and yeah, everybody wants to say passing defense. And I, I think the commentators talked about it in, in the game today. It, it is high. It is elevated, but when Tennessee scoring this many points, you are seeing a lot more passes. So that kind of mm-hmm. skews the numbers a little bit. Um, yeah. There, there's, there's always room for improvement. Listen, uh, coach Heupel and staff came in Monday after beating Alabama and said, hey, guys, enjoy it, but let's get to work. There's things we need to get better on. And that's that's the mindset that you have to have moving forward, and that's how you avoid slipping up and sleepwalking through a, a game against, like, UT Martin. Um, and and I, I, don't, I don't think that they played bad, and, and I, don't, I don't think they started off slow. I think the defense – to me, you know, the offense right down the field uh, scored. The the defense, I think, was up against the wall with guys that they were missing, and you know it. That that's just that's kind of what we've seen from this defense. You know, it, it it is what it is. I believe. Well, and you also you talk about teams, you know, playing from behind Tennessee scoring. Uh, you also have to look at Tennessee's strength is stopping the run. Mm-hmm. So if you've got a team like Kentucky coming in next week, and let's say they want to run the football, do they have the confidence that they can run the football against this football team? I mean, they're, they're top ten in the country in yards per game on the ground. And I would say after today, uh, what did uh, – let's see, what did UT Martin end up with? 76 yards. So their, their rush defense even improves. It's going to get even lower. But you're talking about top ten rush defense. Next week, I think the key for me is getting after Will Levis. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's a weakness for Kentucky. They struggle in pass protection. And I think Tennessee should be able to capitalize and expose that. And, again, today, when you when you look at what this team gave up, yeah, the, the twos gave up a lot. They did give up those first couple of drives. But, again, big-time interception, man. A walk-on, going out there and making a play. Uh, but – other than that, the defense is pretty vanilla. You're you're not seeing all the elaborate blitzes, and that's fine, man. Just go win, get healthy, and that that's a big part of it, man. I saw. I'm not going to call this person out by name. They claim to be media, whatever. You can do whatever you want to do. 
Uh, but when you're tweeting out asking why Tennessee's taking the starters out and not running up the score, it's because we need depth. We need to get healthy. And this is a perfect mid-year break. We, you know, we had the bye week right before, you know, and, and and now you've got another week. That's It's not a bye week, but you're giving guys an opportunity to rest, get healthy. You're getting the twos. Valuable reps. Those are valuable reps. And, you know, I saw Gabe. He's already left. But I saw Gabe tweeted out and said, you know, the twos are struggling today, but they're putting stuff on film. And that's going to be correctable. They can come in. The coach is going to put together a game plan, and we can say, "Hey, look, this is where you screwed up." But you've got that those live reps, and, and you can't. You know, I get you, you practice every single day, but you don't. There's nothing like it's not live game, it's reps. It's not game speed. It's not right. game speed. There's and, a difference. That's, that's the thing. That's the thing that you've seen from this coaching staff. Um, it's not just the the you know elite guys that that have so much talent that, that kind of get better because on their own, you, everybody's improving across the board. You're seeing it offensively, defensively, um, guys, you know, that were making no impact are making impacts. Now, you know, they're, they're, you got guys that are absolutely showing out. And I think it is directly related to this coaching staff and the fact that they are coaching these, these guys up, um, you know, film room, practice field, uh, Taking care of business in games like Ball State, Akron, and UT Martin, so these guys get in the game. You know, when you, you look at previous staffs, you're Georgia in a ball, State, you're Georgia in a ball, State, you're in a ball game until midway through the third, into the fourth quarter, so nobody's getting snaps. You, you know, in a dogfight, but you know, I guess we we both said there are still deficiencies moving forward. But I think this coaching staff acknowledges those deficiencies and they try to scheme around it and, you know, try to go strength on strength. And if, if there is a weakness that they try to kind of conceal it or, you know, you're calling blitzes, you're, you're bringing pressure like we've seen, you know, since, since the LSU game. That, that was – huge in, in this defense stepping up and, and you know containing a mobile quarterback putting pressure on him making him throw bad passes throw with his feet not set um which what does that do that helps your weak secondary let me hit another super chat real quick from an orange cillian for two ut martin would beat akron if they played i don't know that akron quarterback was pretty good he was pretty good I don't know. It'd be, it'd be a ball game, though. It'd be a ball game. Thank you for Super Chat, Orange Cillian. Uh, Jonathan, oh, watching over on Facebook. Jonathan, what are you doing on Facebook? Come to the party. The party's on YouTube. Come hang out with us here. But a good question. How many touchdowns do you think Hyatt ends up with on the year? Uh, definitely breaking the record. And speaking, we'll, we'll, we'll address that. But speaking of records, uh, we, we're not even really talking about the fact that Hendon Hooker now 19 straight games with a touchdown pass, breaking the record by the legendary Heath. Schuler, it just shows the dominance of this mm -hmm. offense. Like it's, we almost take it for granted. We we take it for granted that they're going to go out and put up sixty five. I, I genuinely, genuinely at, at halftime was thinking, are they going to go out and score like 80, 90 points? Like what, what's like? And they could have. That's the thing. If they had left the ones in, of course they could have scored a uh, hundred points. But you know, we take it for granted. But th that's a big time thing for for Hendon Hooker to break that record by Heath Schuler. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know. I I know you talk about Andy Kelly and, and, you know, one of the guys that as a kid growing up, you're like trying to be him in the backyard. I, for me, it was Shuler. I, I remember in middle school um, where uh, it was Alabama week and, and me and, and a buddy, we had uh, a coach. He was a big Alabama fan. So uh, the uh, practice, I can't even remember what day of the week we played, but we kind of did a walk through, uh, just uh, shoulder pads and helmet and shorts uh, the day before the game. And uh, we, we came out with our uh, Tennessee jerseys on and uh, ha had practice. And then we had to run laps after practice. But uh, I, I wore my Heath Schuler jersey, man. I was uh, – of course, that was back when we were beating Alabama on the regular. Yep. Um, so, but, uh, you know, it, it's it's fun stuff. Man, like, Heath like, was up there for me too. Like Andy Kelly was the first one. Heath was a legend to me. And then it's like, 
he gets drafted by the Redskins, and I'm like, come yeah. on, you can't, you can't write up a better story. And then just what an absolute disaster that so, was. But the the question he mentioned was Jalen Hyatt. How many touchdowns uh, does he end up with on the year? I think he's just a what a couple away from the record. I think the record's right. 13, and he's got Joey, 12. Joey Kent with 13, I believe. Yeah, so he's one away uh, today. Seven catches, 174 yards, two touchdowns after the ridiculous performance. Uh, against Bama last week. I, I don't know how the stats will play out. I think he was at the top of the country with touchdown. And, hey, look, we talk about Hendon Hooker for Heisman. How can you ignore what Jalen Hyatt is doing? And and I'm not yeah. saying he necessarily needs to go win the Heisman, but he is a Bolitnikoff uh, award on the, on the watch list. Absolutely. So what do you think he ends up with? I mean, what do we got? We got uh, five games left, and some of those are freaking cupcakes, man. You're talking about Vanderbilt. Missouri, South Carolina, how many touchdowns does he get? But you also got Cedric Tillman coming back, and how does that play into his his numbers? Yeah, for, for sure. Um, I, I, like I said, it, I think it's going to be pick your poison. And I think Hendon Hooker is such a smart uh, quarterback who protects the ball. I, he's not going to force anything. And honestly, the vibe I get from this team, I don't know that any of them are – out there for themselves D- does that make sense i i, I don't think mm. they're they're very, very very concerned about the personal stuff and, and that's you know gabe and i we we were kind of on the same same side of the page uh you know you thought this team would come out slow today and, and he he and i thought that, that they're gonna handle business they're gonna come out and do what they're supposed to do which yeah it may have gotten a little slow at times but it's 52 to seven and a half. This team yeah. started just fine. The, this team did exactly what they were supposed to do. And, and you know, I, I think moving forward, I think with, with Hendon Hooker at quarterback, I, I think that you get, you get Tillman back. I, I think he's going to find whoever's open. Um, and, you know, I think everybody benefits. Um, and that goes back to leadership. Like talking about nobody's out for, for, Numero uno, they're all out for each other. They're out for the team. Jalen Hyatt, last week, That's- meeting with the media, he's like, he's not he, – like, if it's me, I'm up there smoking a cigar saying, did you boys see me haul in those five touch? Like, dude, that's that's a huge – and he's acting like it's just another day. We see it with Hendon Hooker and Joe Milton, their relationship. It's, it's like the quote – or the, the little clip you've played from Hyatt talking about, well, we – you know, we've, we've got a Heisman – you know, Heisman caliber quarterback on our team here. And I go out and I, I try to make every play for him. You know, that's my boy. Uh, so I, I think this team and, and this locker room, they're so bought into the system and, and they're so focused on the big picture. And, and that, that was my whole point where I didn't think today was going to be a letdown. Yeah. You had Alabama last Saturday and, you know, what a game it was. Um, it's still, you know, watch, watching the clips pregame, you know, still kind of gives you goosebumps and you're just like, God, man, that really happened. Um, but I don't think this team had any fog. I don't think they had any of that hangover. Um, I think that the the offense showed up and showed out like they've done all year. Your quarterback came and, and put up. Heisman Heisman quality numbers, um, very efficient, very solid day, and again the defense is what it is. Did you and, see that Ohio State was winning in a blowout and they still had Stroud in throwing throwing passes? Yeah, I mean, and you and you wonder why you wonder it's like get get out of here with that crap like lose my number man if you're out there selling his stats. And you're not watching what Hendon Hooker's doing against the Floridas, the Alabamas, the LSUs. Hendon Hooker could have thrown for 700 yards today. I yeah. mean, he threw for 276 and three touchdowns, and he was out before the half. Before Here's the, the half. Here's the thing. And I, I will guarantee you that Hendon Hooker will say, let me have a shot, a shot at a natty. Oh, 100%. Shot Sh- 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 can have the Heisman. You know, yeah. because, I mean – how many times have you seen a quarterback from like Ohio State or wherever go up and put these gaudy numbers? And, and face it, Ohio State plays nobody ever. Who they play today? I- Iowa, and I think Iowa was five hundred going into the game. So yeah. still, we're we're over halfway through the season, and Toledo is still the only team with a winning record that has played Ohio State. But like, 
they, they come out and they play a bowl game against the SEC school and get boat raced, it doesn't matter if your court, quarterback throws, you know, 47 touchdowns and has 400 yards a game if you can't get it done against the big teams. That's and why I always the- ask, what what should the, the Heisman Trophy be? Should it be the MVP? Like, should it be who is the most valuable to their team? Should it be a stat award? Or should it just be the best player in college football? Because I think the best player in college football, uh, I'm wearing his shirt right now. I think he is hands down the best player right now in college football. The way he carries himself, the way he carries this team. You know, that was my big selling point for the Florida game. Pick this team up on your back and carry them to victory. And that is exactly what he did against Florida. We still got 323 people watching live. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Make sure you do smash the thumbs up. Uh, and look, we're, we're, it's UT Martin. We're talking a little bit about the game. We're talking a little bit about the future. Maybe we'll jump a little bit into the future here in just a second. Let me hit this super chat real quick from Joe Bell. Uh, thank you, Joe, for five. Says, been listening for a long time and always look forward to when a new video comes out. Uh, go Vols. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate that tip, buddy. Yeah, there's so many layers to this channel. It's like videos, but the live streams, man. That that Alabama postgame show, when we went off air, I was like, that was the best, worst live stream we've ever done. But that is everything this channel is supposed to be. For us to be able to come on here and just celebrate with like 1,400 people. Like that was just a celebration, which is why we came back on Sunday and did another stream. Kind of got a little bit more dialed in. But, man, this channel, this – this, we didn't for an hour and a half, for an hour and a half. And Snake's wife, I saw her at the high school football game, and she was like, uh, so what happened to that all-night thing you promised? And I was like, what was the point? Like, we're just yelling and screaming in the microphones all night. It was a blast, but it's like, let, let's – Let's shut this down. Let's refocus and come back on Sunday. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, man. I, I enjoyed it. So here we are. Here we are. We're seven games into the season, undefeated. Kentucky coming up. I think I saw – I don't know if this is right or not. Did I see this accurately, that that Tennessee is a two-touchdown favorite over Kentucky right now? Two touch that, that that probably sounds about right. Night game, kneeling, kneeling at night, Halloween weekend, dark mode. Uh, I think they should do a blackout. I know some of the people in the chat are talking about this orange and black checkerboard. I want a black. What do you? Let, let's start with something petty that doesn't matter. You want blackout or do you want uh, a, a, a mixed candy Halloween checkerboard? <laughs> I, man, I, I don't care. I, I think that'd be a good spectacle. Um, I, I have seen it uh, dubbed Nightmare at Neyland, which I, I thought was pretty cool and catchy. Um, I, I don't care. I, I tell you what. If they come out dark mode with the with the black helmet, though, it's which, coming. Which, which, it's which happening. We, it's we've happening. Seen, we've seen the pictures. We've seen uh, Chase McGrath with the one where he's holding, and and then the one that we uh, Gabe pulled up, and we had uh, I don't know who it was. Uh, it was a backup on the field uh, in practice with it on. So that's that's going to look sick. Um, I, I love it. And, and the players love it. The recruits love it. And, and listen, it's not it's not about Terry and, and Jim and, and Jeff and Steve sitting at home on their couch. It, it's about these kids in the program and these kids that we're trying to get into the program. So. Yeah, which is why I go back to the, the Pat Summit Blue. I think it would be a fun touch, but you do. I agree you do have to be careful. You add another uniform. Like, I feel like what would have happened if the Kentucky game had been a day game? Like, then you're like, how are we going to get these dark mode uni- unis out there? You know what I mean? And I mean, you could wear them during the day, but there's something about wearing it at night that's even better. But uh, let's talk about the football uh, game itself against Kentucky. We touched on it a little bit earlier. Uh, but like I said, you're, you're 7-0. and You got Kentucky. Let me pull up the schedule just so I know don't miss one. I know you got Kentucky, and then you go on the road to play Georgia, and you know uh, we kind of keep revisiting this, and maybe it hasn't changed since the Alabama game because we knew we were going to beat Tennessee Martin. But again, if you had told me going into the year that we were going to be going into the last weekend of October at seven and zero, I would have taken it all the way to the bank. I wouldn't. Ca- I don't care what the stats are. I don't care how many passing yards Tennessee's given up. I don't care about anything. I'm taking seven and zero. All the way to the bank, and then looking at the way the season has played out so far. You know, South Carolina 
They beat Kentucky. And I know uh, that, that's the game that Will Levis was out, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that's the game that Will Levis was out. And Kentucky lost 24-14. to Then they bounced back, beat Mississippi State 27-17 to last weekend. They're off this week. Does that concern you at all as we head into the Kentucky game, the fact that they are off? Uh, n- not necessarily. I mean, it, it does give them a chance to – you know, you got that kind of extra week of practice to, to game plan for this specific game, uh, rest up. But, I mean, if you look at this game today against UT Martin, I mean, that's, that's kind of the same. It's almost like a bye week. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, coming out of the game, you hope turnage is, is good to go next week. I don't think anybody else was really banged up uh, that I saw that had to come out of the game. Uh, but – you know, I think it is sometimes. Sometimes a buy can can bog you down, and, and you know, sometimes it, it does flip a switch and let you reset. But sometimes, if you're clicking and rolling, it's better to just keep playing. You know, yeah. keep that routine, keep that pattern. Um, listen, that atmosphere is going to be it, it's going to be crazy. Especially they come out in dark mode, the fans are going to go nuts. It, it's going to stay – I'll say exactly like it, – it'll be hard to match the passion and intensity of the Alabama because of, you know, Alabama being uh, favored, being ranked higher, it being Alabama, the 15-year streak and, and But an extra that. three and a half hours of drinking? That's what I was going to say. You're, you're getting uh, lubed up for, for a bit longer. It, it is a true night game instead of an afternoon game. Um, Neyland under the lights at night, dark mode, seven and zero. It's going to be electric. I think from here on out, which you, you've only got Kentucky and Missouri left at home, the, the places. I mean, it, you, you're still having trouble finding tickets for everything. I mean, it, it's this fan base, like like we've said the last. I mean, even going back to to Jeremy Pruitt, this fan base is starved for success. Any glimpse of of anything positive, and we're all like, "All right, we're back. I'm in." Feels like '98. Let's go. But like I said, I don't want to say we're back. I want to say we're here because that that's what I'm focused on. I don't want to look back and be like, "Oh, well, we're living in the past." Is is tough to do. It's tough to match that. It's a different team. It's a different style. Um, it, this is unlike Tennessee football. This offense is ridiculous. Um, it, it's just it's fun to watch. And I think moving forward, you know, I, I don't know that it'll be that much of a game. You you look at at Kentucky's, you know, what were they a top ten team? Um, six years ago when they came into Neyland and, and Tennessee boat raced them. One of Kentucky's best teams ever and Tennessee struggling and ends up, you know, beating, beating them so bad. Um, and I know it's, it's typically one of those games that's back and forth and it's tight and, you know, has its moments and, but I, I mean, I, I think we made a shirt that that uh, kind of summarizes <laughs> explains the, 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 the series history. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, but the, the, at the same time, we are Kentucky's daddy, and you can go pick up that shirt at bonfire dot com slash short slash talking balls uh, and let people know that we're Kentucky's daddy. But they do play Tennessee close. That's what that's what history tells us. But you know, as far as today's game, you know, with UT Martin and me talking about a, a, an Alabama hangover and whatever, and, and and I don't think there was real any real impact there. I mean, I, I thought I thought UT Martin would have success throwing the football and they would go score a few touchdowns because of who was out for Tennessee and what UT Martin likes to do. I thought that played into their advantage. And I also thought, you know, the twos may come in and and there would be some mop-up duty. It is what it is. But the bottom line is the schedule plays out perfectly because I would not have wanted to be playing Kentucky this week. And, And you can say this team was dialed in, whatever, 
I mean, they took care of business. It is what it is. But I would not have wanted to play Kentucky this week. And, and it's good to have this game to kind of reset. And I'm sure I, I was laughing. I tweeted out about it at halftime. I mean, it's an absolute domination at halftime. It's 52-7, to seven, and Josh Heupel's pissed. They interview him before he goes into the locker room, and he was not happy at all. He was saying the offense needed to clean things up, the defense needed to clean things up. It wasn't, you could see the anger in his eyes. So let's go, let's go have some teaching moments this week in practice, and, and let's go get ready, and hopefully some of these guys get more healthy. Hopefully Kamal Haddon comes along. I, I think he'll be good to go. Jalen McCullough, I think his issue is going to get resolved this week. I think he will be back on the field. I think it says a lot that Jalen McCullough wasn't kicked out of school. He's still right. he's still going to classes. He's still been around the football team. He's been going through practice. I think that well, tells it, you it, all you need to know about that situation. It, it actually came out that uh, the school, uh, whatever it is, I, I can't remember, the student advisory panel, that he didn't violate uh, student code of conduct. So, That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. And the fact that he's still going through practice. I think Jalen McCullough's back this week. I think Kamal Haddon's back this week. We'll see uh, what happens with Turnage. Ho- hopefully he's back, uh, but, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, but you, you've got a lot of guys banged up, man, and it was good to have a week to kind of get those guys back, get those guys healthy, mm-hmm. but also have a week to get over the biggest win we've seen in the last 20 years over Alabama. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Um, I, I'll, I'll – agree with you totally um it's probably good that kentucky wasn't today i mean i I think this tennessee team is good and this tennessee team beats kentucky i think they beat kentucky if they played them today but i think it's a different ball game i think it's a lot closer i think playing kentucky next week you know going in and it being a night game I, i i think it will be um man i i think they're they're gonna cover and then, um, but then it, then we move on to Georgia, man. Then yeah. we move on, and again, that's why I think it's better that Kentucky's not this week. You talk about a trap game, throwing Kentucky in the middle of Alabama and Georgia. That is a huge trap game, huge trap game. But instead, you've got a week to reset, and, and I get it. Some people are, that's probably going to be something that's talked about all week long in the media. And don't be surprised if I don't start getting on here like an idiot, just regurgitating it. Oh, trap game! Got got Georgia coming up next. But it, it's like you know, I mean, to me, this Kentucky game is is freaking huge, and. and People are going to take this the wrong way, and then they're going to comment, tell me what an idiot I am. This game almost feels bigger than Georgia because I feel like if Tennessee loses to Georgia and goes 11-1, and everybody's going to kind of be like, man, what a great season. What a great season. But if they lose to Kentucky, everybody's going to be like, what could have been, right? That's that's why I say that. It just feels like such a huge game and, and look, we get through Kentucky I'm gonna be talking about beating Georgia I already said it I, I ain't picking against this team As you said earlier they can score on anybody in the country that that's crystal clear that is crystal clear this team can score on anybody yeah the, this offense is going to get their points um and you know we, we've mentioned it you bring back Cedric Tillman the the leader of this offensive team before he went out. Hendon Hooker's comfort blanket before he went out. And and I, I said at that time, this might be a you know kind of one of those blessings in disguise. You know, I hate it, hate it for Cedric Tillman, hate that he's missed these games and this opportunity to uh show out and, and put himself on display. Um because face it he probably could have gone and got drafted in the, in the later rounds last year based on his breakout season, but he chose to come back to school. Um, and then to, to get hurt, especially in the game he got hurt in, mm-hmm. you know, a game that really had no significance and didn't matter. Um, you hated that he didn't get the opportunity to play against Alabama. Um, but like I've said, I think all these guys are, it's, it's, you know, team before themselves, it's it's big picture, and, and they're looking at – they've got bigger goals. They've got bigger goals than just beating Alabama. They've got bigger goals than, you know – they, they want to win the East. And, and I, I saw this morning on SEC Nation, uh, Roman Harper, who's who's been a Tennessee apologist this year, 
you know, he's been pumping, pumping that sunshine for the Vols. Um, he said, you know, hey, listen, it may not be that big of a thing if, if Tennessee takes care of business and then they go out and lose to Georgia because it's that question that – or the, you know, theory that we threw out there. Well, a one-loss Tennessee team, a one-loss Georgia team, and a one-loss Alabama team, you know, who's got the biggest win of that? Yep. Well, it's probably Tennessee and Alabama. So it, it, it's one of those things. Um, and that, that's looking – way down the line because there's still a lot of football left to be played. Um, but at the end of the day, I think if you play your way to winning the East, regardless of the outcome of the conference championship, you're going to the playoff. Do you know how much fun it's going to be if they go to Atlanta to be able to actually do a post-game show for the SEC championship do you know how much fun that's going to be? We've been doing this show for like seven or eight years now. I don't know. I don't even remember how long it's been. How much fun is it going to be to actually sit down and watch an SEC championship game and take notes and jump on here for a freaking post game show? And then you start getting crazy, and it's like, should we just do a freaking watch party? Like, I I don't know what's better. Like, I I don't know what's better. I, I don't know if we should just watch it. But man, it's just fun to be having these conversations. Let me hit a couple of super chats real quick. Michael Davis for two. Uh, doesn't have anything to say, just a tip in the old tip jar. We appreciate that, Michael. Uh, you guys keeping the lights on around here. We appreciate the support. Rob Baxter for two, one game at a time. Beat the blue, go big orange. That's never been more accurate than it is this week. It's just a huge trap game. It's going to be the story. I just said it. it's going to be the story in the media. A trap game looking ahead to Georgia. Uh, Michael Davis for five is on Ohio State fan saying that Stroud is ten times better than Hooker or B. Young and that their defense is ten times better than Bama. Delusional. Uh, just come play in the SEC, Ohio State, and, and let's see how you do going through the gauntlet. I think that's the key. Going through yeah. the gauntlet week in, week out. Uh, Cody Brandt says we've been doing – y'all been doing this live since 2017. Has it been that long that we've been doing live streams? Well, you've been here for, what, three years? I thought we started live just right before you got here. No, I, I, I started I started with the live. Um, yeah, so we've which, not been doing live since 2017. Which would have been, I mean, this is like five years. Insane. Uh, insane. Speaking of, uh, 17,000 subscribers. We hit it this morning. This morning. Dude, I was, so, I was so tired last night waiting on Beasley to commit, and I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I had the video ready. And I'm like, God, can you please just not do this after your high school game in Nashville so it's an hour it's like, oh, my God, I'm sitting there at like 11 just waiting to hit publish video. Uh, but that video put us over the top, 17,000 subscribers. Thank you guys for the support, man. We, we uh, Like I said, you guys keep the lights on around here, and we, we appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't, hit the thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up before we get out of here. We would appreciate it. Also, one last chance, go check out the merchbonfire.com slash store. Slash Talking Vols, we appreciate any and all support, whether you pick up one shirt or 50. And speaking of 50, Vols by 50. Uh, go check out all the merchandise. We appreciate it. I love to see the pictures on social media. Speaking of, uh, Jarrett Black's not there. You got There's the Kentucky's Daddy shirt Dobro was talking about earlier. You can go pick that up as well. Uh, Jarrett Black. Jarrett Black in the Facebook group. He was another one of the members uh, that promised us, said he was going to pick up a tattoo. And uh, Dobro, you saw it. I saw it. Yeah. Man of his word. That's too State Pride Talking Vols tattoos. Absolutely love to see. And they look good, man. Yeah. Like, they look good. I, I'm, I'm, that orange looks good. The gray looks well, good. Well, I mean, like, like you said, you've got it on your hat there. I've, I've got it on the shirt here. That That is it's such a clean logo. It's, yep. it's so sweet looking. Um, looks good as a tattoo. Uh, crap, I missed the Super Chat. I hit it and then missed it. Bill Kell for two. Thank you for Super Chat. What's the this 11-1 talk? 12-0 for me. GBO, we love it, Bill. I'm not against 12 and 0. Let's just go win them all. Let's just go win them all. Look, we're we're an hour into this thing. It's UT Martin. I knew it was going to be a shorter show tonight. Uh, just a rundown of things. The NCAA stream comes back tomorrow, so I'm going to be playing some NCAA football at 6:30 p.m. Eastern time. Come hang out. We'll talk about UT Martin. We'll talk about Kentucky, Georgia. We'll look ahead. We'll get your opinions. Always a good time talking football and playing some NCAA. Also, I'll be dropping the day after video early in the morning, so make sure you tune in for that. 
Uh, Monday morning, myself and Gabe will be live. If Dauber wants to call in sick, if his boss isn't watching, uh, if Xavier wants to call in sick, whatever, uh, we'll be here. Uh, Eric Kane will also kick off the show with us live at 9 o'clock Monday morning. Again, that is Eastern time. And then it's just business as usual. Tuesday night, late night talking balls, 9 p.m. Eastern time fan call-in show. Wednesday night at 7, the return I hope, I think, of Vols JP. I think JP's back uh, from vacation, so he'll be here Wednesday night at 7. Uh, and just rolling more content coming your way. Probably going to be a big week for content. Probably going to be a lot of videos coming your way and maybe even a Friday morning stream. I'm thinking about another Friday morning stream just because it's Kentucky and it is such a big game so looking forward to bringing you guys more content thank you for the support thank you for the love Uh, we appreciate it also if you if you're not a member become a member hit that join button down below if you don't have that power t beside your name why not it's as little as 99 cents a month hit the join button down below Uh, we appreciate the support that is going to do it for this one i was going to say you know what you can do if you become a member you can come hang out with us on tuesday you know what happens when you do that though it's like you're a member and a fan and then the next thing you know, you're a freaking host and you've got to do work and be here on Monday morning at 9 o'clock like Gabe. <laughs> you're on a schedule. You're, if you're good enough, you're on a schedule. And Gabe's got to be here every Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Hey, uh, just so wait. So I, may, I may call your boss and see if I can get you fired. And then uh, you'll have to be here every Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Hey, uh, we're, we're closed Friday. so. Oh, well, let's just do it. Let's, if, let's you do don't, it. If, you, like, if, you, if you don't have anything going on, let's just do a Friday morning stream. Yeah, let's do it. Does Friday morning at 9 work? Yeah. All right. We'll plan on it. We'll plan on it. Uh, Dobber, we'll talk off air and just make sure uh, everything's in line. But if not, I got nothing going on. Uh, we'll do a Friday morning stream. I think it's a perfect opportunity. I think this week's going to be a big week, just like that Alabama week uh, building up to the Kentucky game. But that's going to do it for this one. Tons of content coming your way. He's Dobber. My name is Boogie Bentley. This is the Talking Vols Network. Go Big Orange. Uh-huh.